and welcome, welcome, welcome to Painting in Your PJs with Minette. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan, and what I love is painting in my PJs. Didn't have time to get into my PJs this evening, but I'm in some super, super comfy, comfy clothes. And if this is your first time here, welcome. Thank you for stopping by. Super excited to have you on our channel. And all month long in December, I am using my Write, Paint, Reflect method to paint my way through 21 days of intuitive art and self-reflection using prompts from our brand new set of 118 prompts for self-reflection, only available in our self-care bundle. The link to that bundle is in the comments right below or above the video, depending where you're watching it. If you're joining us live over on Facebook, welcome, glad you're here. I'm not seeing comments on Facebook until later. If you're here on YouTube with me, thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, super grateful for everyone that's joining me. And I'm just trying to get my little chat window open up here. So bear with me while we get all the tech set up and going. And I am having so much fun this month working in the round, creating my first circle journal. Yesterday, I did bind this one together because it was getting a little unwieldy. So I'm actually going to create a new signature today, but here are the spreads from the first seven pages. I've been having so much fun with this. Hi, Leslie. I hope you're feeling better. Good evening, Judy. Thanks for being here. And Judy, I found the Christmas ornaments that I had tangled on, and so I'm going to create a separate video unrelated to this series, and I'll add it to the channel and let you know when it's there about how to tangle on a round surface. I was looking at the ornaments, and I want to practice a little bit and look at a couple of ideas and get that going. So if you're brand new, please do subscribe. It helps me a ton when you subscribe. It helps me a ton when you hit the, the like button. Let other people know this is a video worth watching. <laughs> you're welcome, Judy. I know it's so hard typing on all of this stuff. And um, if you want to get notified when I go live, you can click the little bell as well to get those notifications. I'm so grateful for those of you that are helping us to grow the channel with your likes and your subscribes and your time. I really value your time and I appreciate you being here with me with my crazy creative ramblings. So don't expect a step-by-step -step lesson and process. This is me sharing my process with you and talking about the things that matter and something that matters to me a lot is making art and I love being able to share how using art as an intuitive practice and process helps me get clearer about my own thinking about things and I'm super excited about today's prompt day eight prompt is and I'm just reading it again to make sure that I say it right then I got to move all my screens around is what makes life worth living what makes life worth living Whoa, big prompt, right? Big prompt. Hi, Marion. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome, welcome. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen here. And I want to do, I think, just a mixed media abstract. I, when I was playing with my brand new Sizzix die cut machine, cutting out these circles, I thought, oh, it'd be fun to have a window. You guys know I love to create peekaboo type stuff. And I've added a little bit of gesso to this. This had markers and looks like maybe oil pastel and I don't know what's going on. Needs some more color. And when I first read that prompt, what makes life worth living? The first thought that popped into my head was having a clear sense of purpose. And it's not surprising I thought about that because it was part of the topic of conversation. And I'm going to start coloring and just putting some oil pastel on the page. It was the topic of conversation in our midlife renaissance class today was about having a clarity in vocation or calling and a clarity in purpose, especially as we're getting to the end of the year. And we're thinking about what do we want for next year? Whether you love setting goals or you resist setting goals and can't stand resolutions, 
a lot of times the reason that we don't love goal setting or intention setting is because it's not aligned with our vision for what we want in our lives. It's not aligned with what our purpose or our vocation is. And I'm just getting some marks down on the page. There's no method to my madness here. I just wanted to start with a little bit of color. It's hard to set goals when you don't know where you're going. And so often when we think about New Year's resolutions, they tend to be things that we should do as opposed to the things that we want to do, as opposed to the things that we want to do. And when I was flipping through some collage images and thinking about, oh, do I want maybe a self-portrait in here? Or I definitely wanted something figurative, an image of a person. And I was flipping through my collage images and I found this beautiful page of images of two amazing women, the author Margaret Atwood and Jane Goodall. And we watched Jane Goodall's masterclass on, uh, on masterclass, the, the series. And I really especially love this photo of her. I love all of these photos. And when you hear Jane Goodall's story, she had such clarity of purpose and such clarity in her vocation from such a young age. I love this. I was 10 when I fell in love with Tarzan. I was very jealous because he married the wrong Jane. That was when my dream began to go to Africa, live with wild animals and write books about them. And that is such a fun glimpse into her life. And she had this amazing mother who traveled with her and supported her. And when she was getting started in her journey, it wasn't easy. They didn't have financial backing and support. If you don't know much about her, I highly recommend going and even just looking on Wikipedia and discovering her story. I love this photo of her too. She's quite funny and uh, a good storyteller. And her work has been life-changing in the world of sciences and animals. And I lost my train of thought and it's all good. My point being, one, she's a super cool, amazing woman. The second part of that point being that when you have that deep conviction, that deep sense of purpose or calling, then it's easy to determine the direction you wanna go. It still takes a lot of trust and faith along the path, but we tend to stumble and fall and fumble around when we don't have clarity of direction. Or when we, as I said, when we set goals, intentions, or resolutions that aren't aligned with our purpose. So from my perspective, hi, Tori, welcome, welcome. Uh, so from my perspective, it's essential that we know where we're heading. Even when we're frustrated because we don't have crystal clarity on our purpose, that we can figure out a direction to go. And when we know the direction, then it becomes easier to set goals. So for me personally, one of the things that makes life worth living is having, awesome, Leslie, I didn't know that. I had never, uh, you know, I've always known who she was and I've seen her on TV various times on series, but listening to the, her masterclass that she did uh, was so powerful. Um, that's so interesting, Mary, and I should pull out my soul collage card. Uh, she's also my observer card or my witness card. 
And yes, it is a superpower. She did. She changed a scientific field and a world and always reminds us of how important it is to stay connected to nature. So if you're just joining us, the prompt for tonight is what makes life worth living? And for me, it's having a clear sense of purpose. And there's very few people I would say that had such a clear sense of purpose that is carried all the way through their lives for such a long period of time as Jane Goodall. There's other things that make life worth living for many of us, connection, family, people, like, you know, there's so many things that we can think about. So I can invite you to consider what makes life worth living? What helps you get up in the morning? And I'm going to get my palette going here. So I'm working with a very simple paint palette for this 21 days of intuitive art, Naples yellow, this turquoise blue, which is coming to the end of the tube, boo, and some alizarin crimson, and then maybe some white and black. And I have this picture of Jane Goodall that I want to use, and I want to do some kind of peekaboo window. But other than that, I have no idea where I'm going, and I just want to have some fun getting some paint down on the page. Starting to build up some of those messy layers. I don't want so many layers that I can't see maybe some of that mark making underneath. And it looks super messy, right? And this is like that, when I think about what, how hard it is to get clarity on what makes life worth living, we gotta go through the messy middle. We got to go through those layers of exploration. We have to get curious and ask questions. It's the time of year when people are starting to, I love the mess. It's often my favorite part. I can get stuck in the messy middle and find it hard to go on from the messy middle because I enjoy it so much in my painting. But in my life, I am someone when I don't have clarity, I feel so stumped and I can be frustrated and very hard on myself and rattle around for a long time. So something that, and you know, an aspect of life that's always essential to me personally, right, to me personally is clarity. And I am really good at helping other people get clear and sometimes I still really struggle with clarity. At this point in my life, I have a lot of clarity and I'm super grateful for that clarity. It always amazes me how I can just sort of paint through a messy piece like this and end up with something very cohesive and congruent because it certainly doesn't always seem like that translates to life. I'm curious for those of you who are listening, what makes life worth living? What makes life worth living? What would be your answers? Is it family? Is it work? I was also sharing and I, you know, art makes life worth living. I wouldn't have said that 10 years ago, but today I definitely would say that art makes life worth living. All right, thinking about I may need to get this dry before I decide the direction that I want to go next. And I may, while that's still wet, maybe I'll scratch back through that paint to some of that color underneath, especially like those little pops of yellow under there.
Mm, that one's drying up too fast. Okay, I'm going to hit this with the dryer. I got extra paper down, your kids and grandkids. I love that. I'm just moving this a little bit away from where I put the paint down on my palette so I don't dry the palette. So humans need purpose. They need direction. They need something outside of themselves to think about and focus on. When, if you're familiar with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the higher, you know, wants our basic needs for security, housing, food are met, then our needs change and evolve. And self-actualization is at the top of his chart. But part of that, I think, goes all the way back to what Viktor Frankl wrote about, wrote about in Man's Search for Meaning. And that meaning is the thing that keeps us going even when the going gets rough. All right. That blue did not want to dry, so clearly we're going to have a lot of blue on here. You got a big old happy mess and now it's going to get another layer of white over the top or maybe some white uh, maybe some white stenciling would be fun rather than covering it all up I pulled out a couple of stencils before I got on these are kind of fun so again this is all intuitive I'm just painting my way along, not really thinking too hard about where I'm going or what I'm doing in the moment. I also saw that I had this little butterfly that I cut out from something and thought it would make a cute mask. So we may have a butterfly on here. And a makeup sponge would be fantastic. So my daughter came home last night. We finally got the Christmas tree put up this afternoon. So happy to have her home. Okay, that's fun. And that's more playful than simply painting all of it white. I'm going to ignore that page for a minute because I'm going to want to figure out what I'm doing and where I'm going here. So family is definitely something that is really, really important to me. So Tori says contribution. Yeah, contribution, making a difference. Family, with your art to your grandchildren. I love that. Jane Goodall has a wonderful sense of humor and is quite funny. Okay, so now this is going to help me see my color palette a little bit. Her, the colors of this are a little bit different than what I have going on in this book so far. I'm liking the simplicity of this design right now. And I'm wondering if maybe I'm going to want a black and white picture instead. more interesting, better contrast, right? With the black and white than with the color. So I'll save that color one for something else. Ooh, and I kind of like this little bit sticking out over here. It might be fun if she's on some kind of a little 
tab that maybe she slides in and out. I'm not sure. That could be fun. But I'm liking this kind of where the polka dots are going. It feels busy and full. And I'm going to get some color down on the inside of this as well. I think mostly I just wanted to sit down and make a mess tonight, right? Like that felt really fun. Also in mid our midlife renaissance call, your midlife renaissance is one of my, is my year long, <coughs> excuse me, group coaching program. And this morning we were talking about deep work which is one of my six keys to a midlife renaissance. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a scratch in my throat. Hold on. And the concept of deep work was inspired by the book of the same name by Cal Newport. And we were weaving into this conversation around how do we make time for our most important work some of the teachings of Parker Palmer, who's someone whose work I admire deeply. And he has some great writings about the difference between work and vocation. And how vocation requires us to really listen to our inner intuitive voice and our own inner knowing. And he talks about it as the thing that we can't not do. And so another way of looking at that prompt of, I kind of like where this one is going, a little simpler, little interesting geometrics happening there. When we look at the idea of what makes life worth living, flip that on its head and ask instead, what's that thing that I can't not do? Right? And, and uh, many of the women on the call said, you know, I can't not help people. Or one lady said, I can't not help animals. Like that's a cause that she's very committed to. All right, this feels like it wants to be some sort of floral flower bloom so that when I open it up I have this nice flower complementing the photo of Jane. I also really appreciate how Eric Maisel talks about life purpose from the lens of we don't have just one but we have many life purposes and we may have multiple life purposes in different areas of our lives. And that our life purpose changes. So I think one of the things that I admire about someone who has a really long career like Jane Goodall is their ability to not only have clarity of purpose, but to really stick with that purpose. So I'm taking a baby wipe and I'm wiping it through the stencil. I wanted a little bit different look here. So I'm loving the way that looks. If you've never, hello April, if you've never used this technique before, it's a great way to create texture and pattern by removing paint rather than adding paint. And I love, I'm getting some of the fun marks and patterns from the oil pastel underneath the paint on there. Okay, I'm really loving that. So it's sort of echoing my polka dots here, but in a different way and a different direction. Super fun. And I think I wanna add a little bit more color back in here, but maybe with the, with the polka dots.
And so when you get caught up in thinking what makes life li worth living, what's my vocation, what's my purpose, all those search for meaning existential crisis kind of questions, ask yourself, what's my purpose right now? Not what's my purpose forever, but what's my purpose right now? There's this really fantastic TED talk by this young woman whose name I can't remember about, it's all about being what she calls a multi-potentialite. Someone that has a lot of interest who changes careers frequently and follows a lot of their different passions. Okay, this is like getting super, super messy. Um, feels like I need to dry it and this one might get gessoed over. I'm kind of happier where this is going. And the cool thing about this is that I can also, if I like this better, have it go this way and do something different there. All right, so I think this is gonna get a layer of white on it. So we're gonna let that get mixed up and messy and see where we can go from there. And one of the things she says in this video, first of all, it's just really honoring people made me feel really acknowledged, right? As someone who about every eight to 10 years has changed my career focus often dramatically about what a disservice it is to constantly be asking kids, what do you wanna be when you grow up? And expecting them to say something that can like help them make money or, but to know so clearly when you're young, what your career is going to be or what your ongoing life purpose is, is often a disservice. It's going to change. Like I want kids to say, I want to be a ballerina or a cowboy or, you know, I want to travel to Mars, whatever the, the thing may be, to not hold them to that. But when we start asking people at a very young age to be so definite in their thinking, it stops creativity. It stops our ability and opportunity to stay open and curious about our life path. And I think gone are the days of people starting in one career and staying in that career for a lifetime younger generations. Hey, Diego, you want to come say hi? Come on. Good body. Diego says it's getting close to dinner time, mom, and no one is upstairs paying any attention to me. Okay, better polka dots. Liking that a little bit more. And this is that intuitive part. I don't know what it is about these polka dots tonight that are really speaking to me and feel really playful and fun. Oh, I like having a little bit of them peeking through the window there. And we won't actually see any of those unless I cut her out. All right, stinking cute. Love where it's going. Definitely love the black and white. So I'm gonna to wanna to add some black and white to the design. And I'm not even gonna see a lot of this. I had a lot of fun creating it, but I'm actually not gonna see a lot of it. So I think I'm gonna repeat some of that over here on the other side. But what I'm loving is that yellow center with the blue around it. So I think this maybe needs a little bit more yellow and then some of those blue polka dots over the, the top. So this is a Liquitex Naples yellow. I love this muted yellow. It's almost so muted that it is almost a neutral. We had a really interesting conversation in our Sacred Circles membership call the other night about neutrals and people wanting to use more neutrals in their work and how we tend to gravitate towards bright colors or lots of colors. And the nice thing about neutrals in your artwork is they can calm a piece down, 
give the viewer's eye a place to rest a little bit. All right, do I want the polka dots in the center? I'm kind of thinking maybe just a few right around the edge here would be fun. We'll kind of reverse that pattern a little bit. And there are some artists that I really admire who use a lot of neutrals. Uh, Jenny Grant, Lolly Mill, beautiful work, a lot more neutral palettes. Okay, so those are feeling fun. I love that there's still a little bit of that alizarin crimson in the background. Neutral is countercultural. How so, Marion? It's an interesting philosophy. I don't know why that made me think about Susan Cain's work around quiet, which is all about introverted people and how introverted people get such a bad rap. And the difference between introvers introversion versus shyness is, as well is another part of the work that she does and talks about. She also has a great TED Talk and about how introverts struggle to thrive in a world that is designed for extroverts. Not about splash and drama. It's not. It is not about splash and drama. Right. They're not designed to stand out for sure. Okay, finally feels like this is starting to come together even after all of that initial very messy beginnings. Says an introvert, right, Marion? I often say I'm an ambivert, right? I can be extremely introverted, but there are plenty are, and uh, also extremely extroverted, right? So like, I don't like cocktail parties where I have to stand around and make chit chat. That's super painful for me. Put me on stage in front of the room and I'm happy as a clam because I control the environment and I control the conversation. So I think it's always important to look at how does our introversion and our extroversion show up as well. Okay, those are kind of fun and different, completely different look and feel to the rest of the pages so far in the journal, even though they're the same palette. So what's going to make this work with the, the rest of the book? Regardless, these pages are much more simple, right? There's a lot of blue in this one, but there's just enough cross-pollination because of the symmetry of the palette. This is all going to end up fitting together eventually at the end. This page got a little happy bright, which is fine. And when I look at this, you know, if this, these two pages are side by side, they work, right? There's elements of the same palette. So even though this one feels a little bright, they work. Okay, I'm trying to figure out, I feel like I need a little black and a little contrast on here. So maybe we're just going to do a little stenciling here real quick. If you're new to my channel, this is the way that I work. I just follow the threads of intuition and I am simply going, what feels fun to add next or what direction do I want to go? So my inner voice that I'm not, you're not always hearing, although I try to make that process visible, is to just follow the threads of my thinking. I am also being mindful of contrast a little bit, not a lot. That it was a little too white. It definitely needed a little bit of dark on there. I'm almost feeling like this needs just maybe a little bit of dark around the center of this opening here that's going to frame our photograph.
And I'm wanting, let's see if we can make this stencil fit on here. It just needs some of those natural elements we can't mention or think about Jane Goodall at all without thinking about animals and nature and the natural world. Oh, that turned out super cute. I will cut her off of her background. Yeah, for sure. Okay, I love those. This is going to end up being part of another spread, so I'm not going to worry about that one for now. But this is all part of the same story. And I think that's enough black on the surface, but there's still that idea of somehow, I don't know if I want her to be permanently affixed. I think what's in intriguing to me is this little bit of a tab sticking out over here, but I do like that idea of what if we cut her out from her background. and put her on that yellow center. I love fussy cutting. I love fussy cutting. I can spend time and I do in the evenings going through magazines and fussy cutting. All right, very cute. I still think I want a fun little tab over here for maybe opening this top part. Now you can see even more why I needed to add that little bit of black and it feels a little too black. So I think I'm going to go over that with a little more color on this cover. But this black was perfect over here on this side. She's so amazing. Like I'm just enjoying sitting and admiring her and thinking about her story, about how much fun Brad and I had watching the Masterclass series. Okay, I'm gonna come back in. Just soften that up a little bit. Bring some of that yellow back. Get this all feel like it matches a little better. Love it when an idea starts to, to come together and I can really see the direction that I'm going. I don't want the black to disappear. I just want to neutralize it a little bit, soften a little bit. So it's not pulling my eye quite so much. And now also adding that little bit of yellow. Feels like this is marrying a little bit better with what's happening on the inside. And then if I stick her in here and when this page is open, do I want anything else on this page? I think I'm gonna keep it super, super simple. All right, and get some glue stick on her. I'm so happy to finally get my Christmas tree up. It was a it was a good day. I had a fun connection call. I had a great final coaching call with the student. I always love when I complete with someone and send them off on their way. We had a great midlife renaissance call and then I found a new chiropractor today. And then we came home, put the Christmas tree up and ordered pizza for dinner. So it's been a good day. And sometimes when I think about, oh, hmm, 
great idea, Leslie. You always have the best ideas. And sometimes when I think about what makes my life worth living, it's the little moments. It's not the big moments, right? It's not always about what's my purpose and where am I going? Sometimes it's just like, what brought me joy today? What am I grateful for? Gratitude can be that thing that makes life worth living. I'm still not happy with this front cover here. So I'm just going to keep adding paint until I am happy with it. Much better. Okay, I just needed to push that black all the way back, have a little more contrast. And I like maybe a little extra black around the frame, just around the inside here. And maybe even around the outside edge or just grunge this up a little bit. Okay, that's feeling better. And then let's think about, I think these wings are too small. And I was looking at these butterflies earlier and thinking, would a butterfly come into play? So let's see. So Leslie Eibler suggested that I give Jane some butterfly wings behind her. So let's just play with that idea and see what happens. I love collaborative art, right? Like it never needs to be do this or do that. Although my husband says if I ask him for ideas and suggestions, he doesn't like to give them because I get really defensive. And I don't think that I get defensive. And he's probably right. Like coming from him, I get more defensive than coming from other people. All right, lift her up before she gets super stuck. I love this sort of mirrors the, the wings that are underneath her uh, or on her uh, beautiful scarf that she's wearing. I was hanging up my Christmas ornaments today and we decided to kind of go with bright, colorful, old-fashioned ornaments instead of some of the, you know, glass ones. And I found a handmade ornament from my beloved Aunt Darlene who passed away in October. Nope, don't like the butterfly wings once it's closed. But it was fun to test and I wouldn't know unless I just tried. Okay, we're going to give her some more glue stick. I wish you could see the detritus on my desk right now. It looks like a bomb exploded. Okay, let's, I want to see more of that yellow, so I'm thinking she's going to maybe get positioned down there like that a little bit. And then just remembering that, reminding myself that peaches don't have to be super complicated. Sometimes it's the simplest pages that have the most impact and there's such a story and there's so much happening in her beautiful face that I want her to be the story right I want her to be the story and that's all that's needed 
and I will remember when I get to the right paint reflect part of the process, when I get to the reflect part of the process, I'm going to remember that she's such a shining example of someone who has such a clear vocation, a clear calling, a clear sense of purpose that has carried her through her life. I don't think she needs anything, but I will write in here something about, or maybe over here underneath, about what makes life worth living for me is a clear sense of purpose. So much deep admiration for her, and I think it's, yeah, agreed, Marion. It's a setting where she's shining through. And she is the story, right? And uh, when I think about someone like this that I have deep admiration for, I think about, well, how am I like her, right? What In what ways do I have that, that clarity of conviction and purpose and a cause that I care deeply for? Where might I want more of that? How am I different in all the best ways? Because difference is important. But I get curious. I get really, really curious about these questions. Yes, Diego, I know. He's back saying, Mama, it's dinner time. So I think that's it for this evening, keeping this super, super simple. Even though it felt like a lot of layers, like I put on a lot of layers to sort of get to the simplicity, right? That I had to paint through all the mess and that messy, messy middle where we started to get to this clarity and simplicity of having clear purpose is what makes my life worth living. So thank you to all of you for joining me live. Thank you, Jane Goodall, for all the beautiful work that you do in the world. Thank you to each of you for all the contributions that you make to those around you. And I invite you to maybe have a conversation with your loved ones or with yourself in your journal and dig a little deeper into what makes life worth living for you and why. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Dr. Minette Riordan. This is Painting in Your PJs Live with Minette. I will be back bright and early in my PJs tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. Mountain Time for day nine of 21 days of intuitive art. Have a great rest of your evening. Good night, everybody.